Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Metaphysical. In the first two episodes of this four-part series, we covered some of the craziest Mandela effects we came across, including some that we've experienced ourselves. Then in part three, we talked about what the Mandela effect really is, where it could have come from, and the implications for humanity. But today in part four, we'll get into the juiciest part of this discussion. Have you heard of Project Looking Glass? This rumored government project involved looking into the multiverse via technology in the human body. There have been so many reports by so many names on such a phenomena, so we decided to go deep into this. Your mind is going to be blown when you hear what remote viewer John Vivanco's data had to say about the Mandela effect and my investigative research. So join me and John Vivanco for a show that's out of this world. And if you are listening to the Metaphysical Podcast or watching us on a video platform, please leave us a five-star review and make sure you like and subscribe wherever you are. Oh, yeah. John, how you doing? Good. This is yep. going to be the craziest episode, bro. <laughs> it is, right? Yeah. It's going to be the craziest. It's, All right. uh, yeah. All right. we- we've got i mean we've we've gone into a bunch of stuff here but um i think the the compelling thing about project looking glass is we have at least at least 3 credible sources that have confirmed project looking glass exists and and most of what we're what we're going to go over actually has to do with time and the reason why this in this sort of involves the mandela effect or is related in some way is because the mandela effect seems to be some sort of strange interference to the timeline that has caused changes in our reality and project looking glass of course has many synchronicities with that or parallels to that that yeah. that will be going into here and and John could you kind of would you feel comfortable kind of telling the audience what your take is on what project looking glass uh, as a as a as a project is oh well, well okay so interestingly you know you've got the chronovisor and you've got the looking glass right so the chronovisor was the vatican supposedly the vatican created thing by a friar in the 1950s where it's like some old analog machine that you can catch snapshots of the past and the future. Or in their and, case of Jesus, which they reportedly did. Oh, what's that? They, I said, or in their case of Jesus, snapshots of Jesus, which they right. reportedly did, right? Well, interestingly enough, so I knew a guy, uh, this person from the past that was involved in um, intelligence matters that said that it did exist. Hmm. The chronovisor, at least that. Um, I assume that's what what the person was talking about. Um, could have been talking about looking glass as well. Um, but looking glass would be somewhat similar to that, except more robust in that there are these ideas as well that you could use it as a uh, transference device, like like transferring realities, transferring to other locations. So it had these like deeper aspects to it, at least in the lore, um, where it could be a time machine, straight up time machine, or looking at potential scenarios in the future. Because see, here's the thing. We go back to the double slit experiment. They're probabilities. They're, they're not solid things. And so... Looking glass makes more sense to me in general from the perspective of how quantum reality seems to work, you know, because because you're not going to be looking at an event. You're going to be looking at probabilities of events. And that's how this is usually framed. Right. And and then yeah, interesting. Right. And so and then on top of that specific type of apparatus that they were using, you've also got this idea that you've got a computer a quantum computer that is is judging what the most probable outcome is, right? Yeah. So, and then, so, a, so you're saying it's a piece of technology, potentially alien technology, we don't know, right. that's hooked up to a computer and generating basically percentages of probabilities based off of whatever you're inputting into the machine on, on what's going to happen with certain events. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's my understanding of it. You know, we've remote viewed it too. So, you know, it is a reality. It is something. It is something that does exist. Really interesting. So, so some, 
basically overview of this as like participants basically sit in a chair, possibly recovered from a downed ET craft. Their consciousness is connected into the device and what they're perceiving was projected onto a screen. The thoughts of the person interacting with the device affected what they saw, kind of like what you were just saying. So for example, yeah. if they saw a historical event that they believed in, or already had notions about, that's what they would see. Others would see the same events differently. Some accounts say participants couldn't see any events past December 21st, 2012. They believed that's where humanity would either go to a positive timeline or a negative timeline. And that was the turning point. Some say there was a statue of the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland placed above the entrance to the Project Looking Glass lab. What does this all sound like? Uh, I know. So it's um, so we've got uh, you know a couple of uh, whistleblowers here, um, who who've talked about this and 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 what each of them said. I think it's worth kind of going into um, mm -hmm. to some extent because, um, even though Bob Lazar said very little about it, some of the significant things about Bob Lazar's account is that. He did look at he was a part of a of a of a different um, project at the time. Um, and, you know, everybody... yeah, he so he basically yeah. Bob Lazar read some briefings on it yes. that were very short. And that's it. He didn't know very much about it. He said yeah, but, that it had to do with time dilation. Exactly. So but what he did say is that and this is this is kind of what I found interesting is he said it did have to do with time dilation or, or looking at how to almost take advantage of anomalies within time. But he but he he was kind of adamant on saying, I'm not talking about time travel here or anything crazy like that. I'm talking about like strange temporal displacements in time or something right. like that. Okay. Right. But right. then what was interesting is when he was talking to Joe Rogan, Bob said, and it wasn't a part of a this is what he said is like it wasn't a part of a weapons um project and then he went wait a minute no 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 it was actually <laughs> right because because he wanted to correct himself because it like all of these things were like right. peripherally related of course to weapon projects right so the military understanding and utilizing some type of weapon or creating a weapon that can uh right change time or or distort time would of course be within you know <laughs> that's their bag, right? Like, of, exactly. of course, that's something they would be looking into. Right, right. I got to tell you, okay, so we've got Bob Lazar, Dan Burrish, and Bill Wood, right? Yeah. So, so those are the three whistleblowers. Now, here's the thing that I have trouble with in general when it comes to whistleblowers. Um, okay, you, you and I have been in this field enough to see a lot of mysterious deaths. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of mysterious deaths happen well, somebody decided to commit suicide and hang themselves from a doorknob with a red scarf or something like that. Right. And, and, and they've said beforehand, you know, we're not, I'm not going to commit suicide just to let y'all know. Right. And a lot of this stuff involves who knows what, but we see these things, even, even like famous people, even famous people. And we go, yeah. hmm, there's something weird going on here. You've got scientists coming out of area 51 who are talking about some of the highest classification stuff and they're not being offed when it seems so simple and easy for these people to just off people at the drop of a hat and they don't care. Come on. These are operations, man. Now we look at these things at the same time and there's aspects that are true. These are, these are, these are operations. They, they are operations at base to not only release information to the public, but then to also send people in directions that will, they'll just dig around forever and not really find anything, right? To waste their time. So that, you got to keep that in mind when these people come. And they, why are they all coming out of the same place? Why when you say same out? place, what do you mean? Like Area 51, Area S4, 51. Groom Lake. You know, why are they all coming out of the same place? You know why? It's because they, that's part of an operation. You put up the smoke screen, put up the smoke screen so you can retreat and bury it deeper somewhere else. You can you can go move all this stuff elsewhere and do something different and deeper. And this is also what happened with remote viewing. 
when remote viewing was declassified, it was the smoke screen to move these this type of stuff into deeper black, black projects and to change it. So it's the same thing with this. You know, while I listen to these people and I find what they say interesting, you really have to take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah, you, yeah, you do. And, and, and it, you know, also it's very it's very old information at this <laughs> point. Very, right. Right. I, I don't mean the, that's not me being rude here. I'm saying no. it's it's yeah, dating. They're, yeah, they're, it's dated. They're way more advanced now. I mean, right. Um, they better come up with something new. I mean, there's uh, there are places other than just sorry, I'm like banging everything around. There are places other than just um, uh, Groom Lake and Area 51. Of course. Where are the whistleblowers from those areas? Yeah, no one, no they're one. not around, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I do think, like, it, part of this entire thing, too, you have to, like, I'm thinking as if I was strategizing how to cover all the bases, if I'm somebody in the military that knows that aliens exist, that is working on some of these black ops projects, there has to be a percentage of people coming out to make sure that people are aware of these things, even to a minute extent, right. just to make sure that no one goes crazy if something happens right. eventually. Right. right. Cause you remember, you remember back in what was it? The twenties when, uh, who was the, the, the famous radio dude that came out with, uh, with, uh, the war of the worlds or whatever on radio. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't remember I mean, the name. People were literally losing their mind when, when right. that happened, like they didn't realize it was, you know, entertainment. And right, and and they're like losing their mind, and so Orson Welles, Orson Welles, thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just think that they they have to be covering as many of the bases as possible. Now, uh, right. there's probably absurd, severe negligence and and incompetence and in a lot of everything that goes on anywhere there's human beings. But um, you know, it's a great point. Like, why is Bob Lazar able to talk about Area 51 so openly when no one else is willing to do it and nothing's happening? Like, that doesn't right. really add up, you know? No, it doesn't add up. But what's it also doesn't. really bizarre is, like, Bob Lazar is the stuff that this whistleblower fun stuff to talk about is made of to some extent because we're right. talking about, like, UFOs and potential alien yeah. um, contact. That, that has given us technology that we're potentially using today. Yeah, exactly. And this is stuff of the highest classification. These people would be, if they truly were like releasing information as a whistleblower, no, they'd be gone. They would be gone. There are literally satellites in space that can shoot a laser down and blow one of those guys up if they were going to go right. public about something. I'm exactly. not even kidding. Like you I know, I know. <laughs> and, 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 you know, outside of that, we see like... They don't care if you're a famous celebrity. If you do something against them, you just you'll just commit suicide. Or yeah, so, or you'll disappear somehow. Or you'll disappear. That's all there is Very to conveniently. it. Conveniently. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, but project looking glass. So digging into that whole side of it. I don't know. I mean, with our remote viewing data, yes, we saw that it was real. There was this aspect of it which I found interesting. So you get talk to Dan, you get into Dan Burrish and what he says. And he talks about like it being an ancient technology. He literally was talking about it being uh, on cylinder seals that were found in Iraq. Okay. This is very interesting. Right? This you remember part, that? Yeah, I do. So the, the cylinder seals, now we've talked about this, like what I thought was so interesting about that is you and I both know from this recent China episode that we produced that. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. He looks like some James Bond villain. Right <laughs> he there. totally does, like Doctor No or something. <laughs> yeah. It's All right, go ahead. I just got. I didn't say it. Like... <laughs> so there's a photo that Lindsay pull, pulled up of uh, Bursch probably in the 90s, and and he just looks like a James Bond oh, villain in a really fun way. It's that no collar shirt. Like anytime anyone wears that no collar yeah, shirt, you can't you know, do it's that. Funny. It's the Mao shirt, you know. <laughs> So, um, sorry, what was I saying? <laughs> cylinder seals. Okay, yeah, the cylinder seals. So, you know, we, we produced this episode, if you guys haven't seen it, on, um, on uh, China, where we talk about these ancient swords that they have, and we also kind of got in these accounts. And, and one of the accounts was from an emperor, Qin Shi Huang, about um, the uh, Sum ancient Sumerians, these people that he claimed were from the, the country of Wan Chu, and um, these were the ancient Sumerians. Some people might call them the Anunnaki. Um, 
you know, from this ancient Assyrian or Sumerian uh, race of men, uh, oftentimes being shown as giants holding lions like their little house cats. I mean, big guys that that Chin Chi Huang claimed were giants. And they had this spectacular form of technology that w- looked similar to uh, a cone or a corn or ways or maize rather, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, a lot of people criticized us and said there wasn't corn in, in China, but actually that's not true. There was maize in China for thousands maize, of yeah. years. They, they're Absolutely. just form of carb that they enjoyed was rice. That's just the, the yeah. direction that they went. They just didn't get into the, into the corn very much. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, the, the point is, is like if their technology was good enough to be creating that, I mean, what else could they do? I mean, this, this came up in that episode where we were like, we've got to dig into this. What are some right. of these other things that they're showing us on these relief, these trees that they're showing us, like, right. uh, were they forms of technology? What else was going on? And here you have Dan Bursch talking about, these cylinder seals from from a long time ago, maybe even pre Syrian. Well, that's what shows up in our data. That, th- that that this technology is ancient. Like remote viewing data specifically said, this is very very old ancient technology, which is very interesting, very strange. It also talks about an operator's mind being involved in it. I mean, so, so there has to be a person operating the the right. machine, basically the the ancient it's, machinery whatever exactly it's it's part of the mind of the person that gets involved with it connects to it that's so weird because montauk was completely revolved around frequency and hooking someone up to it like they were on all onto these things are connected all these things are partially the same there's so much overlap with all of these projects now whether they're using the same base energy source and energy form i don't know i think that's what the difference is with these things but ultimately what they're doing is they're sliding into the same position into a into a position where you've got overlap with other dimensions other timelines and other realms and i think there are different frequencies for moving to let's just say another dimension parallel dimension or moving to an in between space in between dimensions or moving to the future or moving to the past. I think literally it's it's going to be close to the same technology across the board, except for the, the output of frequency, because everything is energy and everything exists on a specific frequency. And I think that's really what it comes down to. The frequency has got to be different to move to different places. But and- we, get this, we get this stuff, like what Burge talks about, what uh, Wood talks about, what Lazar talks well, not so much Lazar because he only knew a little bit, but we get the same bit. stuff. And and that's really interesting because I think we should get into basically what Bill Wood said because we've mentioned him, but yeah. we haven't really gotten into what this gentleman said. Now, Birch and Wood were both on Project Camelot and um, the videos that they were coming out with. Um, and Bill Wood, his testimony was very interesting because – and this is kind of where the Mandela effect part of this all comes back in too. He basically, um, he, he said that there was a date that the computers or project looking glass really? came to where, where beyond this date, there was nothing. They were using project looking glass to try to change things, to try to change the future, to try to change future events, whether right. it was a catastrophe or, or, or you're in the camp of just believing that the elites want full control over everyone. Right. Either way, there was something that they were trying to change or that they they were looking at having control over were after after the date of 12 21 2012 they were no matter what they did they were no longer able to change these things project looking glass and the computers hooked up to project looking glass were constantly giving them back information or probabilities that were the same events are going to happen no matter what they tried to change. And they were right. trying everything. So imagine putting in, going crazy, putting in information into this computer to figure out how you could take control of the future and, 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 and change the future. And there is a culminating set of events that you can't avoid or an unknown series of events that you can't control. Right, right. And so Bill was basically claiming that why these people were in a state of panic wasn't because it was the end or a catastrophe, but more that it was the end of their control and that there was some sort of 
there was some sort of awakening or not awakening, ascension going on, a, an enlightenment that people were having where they were waking up to more spiritual truths. And um, it's really interesting because I think maybe actually, John, you should step in here and talk a little bit about what you were telling me in the 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 dips and the uh, and you know the waves that kind of go along with consciousness and what you guys saw because right. it's fascinating. Well, okay, so I mean, well, Bill. So first off, I did Project Camelot. Just so y'all know, is is that uh, Carrie Cassidy and I think it was Bill Ryan. I think that was yeah. his name. Um, they've been doing this for years, interviewing whistleblowers, and they're still running or at least Carrie is Carrie's running with this still running with this after all these years. And they have a lot of great films, uh, from whistleblowers, really interesting stuff. Um, so anyway, what we, so, okay, man, see, this gets really whacked out because, um, human beings, when you get into like this idea of the awakening, um, and, 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 looking glass and what they were seeing. Um, I know that Bill Wood said something about they shut down project looking glass because they kept getting the same output and the ones that were running it didn't want anyone to see what that output was anymore. Um, we, we did get that. It was still running. We didn't get that. It stopped running. Ultimately. Why would they stop like, that? Our data was like, yeah, it was, it was still, it was still running. It might be in a different, might be in different hands, but it's still running. Um, and so, what we've seen with remote viewing data is 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 this, um, you know, the inflation theory, like like with the Big Bang, um, there were aspects yeah. of the Big Bang that they really couldn't like, uh, they couldn't like understand, and so they created this idea of uh, inflation theory. Whereas as as the as the initial Big Bang slowed down. Um, a new universe was formed off of the old universe and a new big bang occurred. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and it keeps expanding in this way. It's like these fractals output of fractals and as inflation ended, like on the quantum side, another bubble universe was created. Another big bang began. It just kept going and going. And so this is thought to create the multiverse and parallel universes. And, and, and so you get into the, the, the multi multiple world theory here which, which this is, a, this is literally a theory that physics has where if you, for instance, took one road to go to the grocery store one day, a road that you didn't normally take, you would have also created a reality going on a road that you did take. And so you would have had split realities. Um, so our remote viewing data talks a lot about that specifically right there where there's a process a somewhat of a spiritual process of, of coming together of worlds and dimensions coming together. So if you have things going apart and then coming back together, what we experience when we begin to become, I guess you would say enlightened or more awakened is that the realities start to move together. And, and our explanation for the Mandela effect was literally that in the data was that, a lot of beings are going into a, into a more spiritual process. And this is why we're seeing these, these effects occur with the Mandela effect, because you have all these split realities, multiple worlds idea coming back, merging into one. Of course, you got them like going in and out of it and then merging back to one. And when you said to me about how you had a lot of deja vus and then they stopped when you started to really get spiritual and meditate, there is exactly what I am talking about, Rob, exactly what I am talking about. That, what you experience is the Mandela effect coming together. It's, it's all the realities coming together into one because you are bringing it, we are bringing it all back together into one universe where there's one single experience, one single mind. That's what we've seen. And so when you think about when you talk about the yugas, for instance, the long Hindu time frames of of the ages that they're like twelve thousand years or so, they have this notion of that. And all cultures, many many cultures across the world, have this notion of these long ages, where where people come back, where there's a cleansing, and people become enlightened and like, or, or, or move towards enlightenment. And then a new age begins. 
right? And so this is what we see where it's like, we are at the end of an age as far as like cosmology is concerned, especially when you look at Hindu cosmology, we are at the end, even the, the Christians have it as well, where they talk about the, uh, the biblical references to um, the end of the world, right? People place it in different contexts, right? There's usually a cleansing in between these periods of time. And also in these periods of time, there's, there is a coming back into oneness, um, a single purpose, single mindedness, spirituality. All of this stuff has to do with that. All of it. The Mandela effect, the deja vu, um, looking glass and those projects tap into the multiverse to try and manipulate and move towards other things that they think would be better for themselves. Mm -hmm. But you can't stop this thing coming back to itself. And that's what's happening here. That's what we see here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's really, it's, it's kind of crazy if you think about it, but what, what's, what's so sort of bizarre is this panic and not being able to control that. Well, like using the looking glass to try to be able to take control of all of that for, right. for good or for, for better or for worse. Right. Right. So I, I'm actually not, I don't believe, I believe, I think a lot of people believe that there is a looming catastrophe I believe whatever is going to happen is going to create this sort of renewal and where scientists will point to whatever is going to happen. You know, like I said, their get out of jail free card is the multiverse. It's like they'll it's 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 this one way of it, that it could have gone. But I really believe that the way that that goes is really dependent on the combined human race and their their level i guess you could say of where they're at in their consciousness as to whether right. or not there's going to be huge destruction or some type of coasting into what is you know a new right, right. a new world right well you know that's that's the thing of it it's like those you know what we've seen is that they want to have a type of destruction occur and are preparing for a type of destruction i mean you see all these bunkers being built Gender international government and celebrities right you know right. like like we got to survive the coming destruction that's going to happen convinced that it's going to happen um and and setting up for that and hoping that it happens as well because for one they can wrestle more control afterwards because there will be less humans. It's like the, you know, satanic world order, basically. And that's what I think personally. Yeah, it's uh, the it's the it's the 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 rehash of Babylon after Noah's flood. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly that. And that's what really is hoped for with these individuals. Um, now, but you also have to think about like, you know, that's a little woo woo, right? It's, it's somewhat woo woo. It's like, but when you get into, into science in general, there earth does have a history of catastrophe. Earth has this, this, this history of every 12,000 years. And, and this stuff was classified. Like the CIA had classified. Yeah, they, both they would know this. Right. And the they would hide it. It's important CIA to say that. Literally classified a book. Um, by Chan Thomas in the 1960s, I believe. And that book was all about the catastrophic cycles of the earth, right? And then you have Hapgood, I think Charles Hapgood, I can't yeah. remember his first, Hapgood, who, who was also talking about the same thing. But his theories were, were shot down because he made some errors in his theories. Some people think that Hapgood was a CIA plant in order to throw people off so that those theories of catastrophism would get crushed. And then Chan Thomas, the real work, was thought to have been classified. And that's really where it's at. That's it. And it's the Adam and Eve story. But now that the CIA just released only 57 pages of that book, declassified 57-ish pages out of a 280-page book. Okay? But you can get a good idea of what it's about. Now, if you really want to know what it's all about, watch the movie 2012. Because... That movie is the Chan Thomas book and Hapgood's hmm. stuff, okay? That's really what it's about. So the Earth goes through these cycles. Major Tom, major, oh gosh, what was his name? 1940s, Major White. They, he had a huge expedition 
that went uh, to the North Pole to try to understand magnetics, how to navigate um, and, and, and grid the whole northern area. What he found and his information was classified as well. And it took his son later coming out and writing a book about what he was told about it. A very interesting book. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to dig that up in a second. But basically what what the government knows is that every 12, 16, 12, 12,000 years, there is a major catastrophe on the planet. And it's got to do likely with um, something called a, a galactic current sheet where our, there's a current coming from Milky Way center on the bands of the Milky Way. It's like this current that is like every 12,000 years as it moves and, and it disrupts the earth. It disrupts the sun, especially where the sun blows out a, like a, a micronova. So if you watch something like Suspicious Observers and Ben Davidson, he really, he looks at the scientific data, the scientific side and goes into a really fascinating stuff that he presents. And he's always on top of what the science is doing. We see that, that in what he's presented is that the, there are suns that are close to us that are outbursting as it, as this galactic sheet gets near to us. And so this is something that, that those in positions of power know and what they are preparing for because the ice cores and the, the magnetism in rocks changing at different layers in the earth show that catastrophic things tend to happen about every 12,000 years. You know, when you get to the, uh, Greenland ice cores and the Younger Dryas area. And this is something that, um, uh, what's his name talks about, um, uh, Graham Hancock. The Greenland ice cores paint a picture 12,000 years ago of intense drop in temperature and intense rise in temperature in a very short period of time. We remote viewed that. We remote viewed what caused the intense increase in temperature and we get an outburst from the sun. All the data is about the sun. This is the thing that happens every 12,000 ish years or so. And we are 12,000 years out from that now. Um, so we have scientific data that, that supports the idea of cataclysms, but I'm not a doomy person. I don't right. go to doom. I don't, I, I feel like there is aspects of us that what we focus on can bring it to, fruition at the same time but i don't know ultimately if we can escape the the cycles of the planet i mean heck you know even when we remote view gobekli tepe and um these other complexes that were built underground they were they built these to escape from cataclysm that they knew was coming beforehand it's the weird, I mean, it's the same thing. Cycle yeah, over and over. What are the elite doing right now? <laughs> and, and what I think is so interesting about this is why I think Project Looking Glass was such a great place to end this entire discussion is because the the panic came about because after 12-12-2012, right. they lost the ability to figure out what was going to happen next. Right. Right. It's it's completely unknown. And so now if we look at how kind of poetic and beautiful this is, you've got all of these potential different timelines that potentially came together, causing the Mandela effect. Right. Creating exactly. a situation. That's what yeah. it is. Man. Yeah. <laughs> creating a situation where now we can't escape the, into another timeline. You, Yeah. Yeah. There's no other timeline to go. Like the one that we're in is the one now that's being, that's being created based off of where our consciousness is right now and where exactly. we're heading. It's so, crazy. So instead of being scared about some doom, which even those guys don't even know about, they can't even predict and they have no idea what's going on. Right. All we really need to do right now is take a step back, take a deep breath and focus on what's going on in here. Right. And the best outcome awaits. Exactly. Like that's Who cares? it. It doesn't yeah, really it, matter. It does. Not only does it not matter, but it's really exciting. It's like there we're in a place now where the 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 future is like unknown. No one knows what it is. Everyone's kind of freaking out. 
And it's so clear to me that this is the opportunity and the test that we've probably been waiting thousands, millions, who knows how many years for, where we're really just like, what kind of people are we? Where are we going to go and how are we going to be? And yeah. and now we got an opportunity to show to to show that or at least like act in a way that isn't based off of previous notions. And and I think what we're moving towards personally is is something very different and no one can predict. It's a renewal. And right. you know, will it be challenging? When is things when are things not challenging? I mean, well, here's are. the thing, you know, you think about how, like for yourself, for instance, and you've got these, these, all of these deja vus happening and Mandela type effects happening that are pushing all these realities to one central point reality. That is this reality right here. What do you think all that power is? All that power is spiritual power mm. to bring it back to the central core so that yeah. you can ignite your own sun. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what it is. That's what this is. That's what the Mandela effect is. That's what we've seen. Well, what I love about this is I've watched a lot of videos on the Mandela effect and ain't nobody out there has kind of put all of this together, right. I think, um, in, a, in, you know, a similar way that, that we right. have here. And uh, of course, there's more information out there. I'm not saying we're right either. I just think... Um, this was a great take on the entire thing. Yeah. I'm glad we had this discussion. And, uh, and I think, I hope you out there who, who are consuming all of this have, have, have kind of gained more of an understanding of the different perspectives of the Mandela effect, like the, the, the ways that it's affecting us and maybe uh, even, you know, where we're headed. So um, yeah, John, awesome discussion as usual. Good one. Yeah. And uh, you guys will be back uh, quite soon. We're, we're not done on the time uh, on the time discussion. There's still there's still some time travel episodes that we need to pump out that that yeah, get absolutely. a little bit more into this. We probably want to talk a little bit more about that chronovisor. That thing sounds awesome. And um, and yeah, and then we're going to be getting into all kinds of fun stuff. I think uh, looming in the, the near future, we have the uh, the Dragon's Triangle, which is the triangle out there in Japan. All kinds of weird phenomena happening out there. And um, yeah. And so stay tuned, you guys. We hope that you thought this episode was as out of this world as we did.